What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another video. So this is going to be a overview plus tutorial on Mira Project, um, which was released yesterday, the 11th of May 2020. So uh, there's a lot of confusion about this because it released as the source files without actually providing any compiled version for people to try. And a lot of people are just confused as to what it is. I've been getting spammed on Twitter from people asking me to cover this to just try and explain it to people and show them how to install it. So that's what I'm going to be covering here. So most of this video is going to be me trying to kind of explain this whole thing. And then um, at the end, I'll show you guys how to install it. When it first launched yesterday, I was a bit confused about it myself. I did probably annoy a couple of developers asking them some stupid questions, mainly Theory, theory Wrong and uh, The Dark Programmer. So thank you guys for putting up with me yesterday. Basically, Mira is kind of the first sort of custom firmware for the PS4. And this confused a lot of people because they assumed that that means you know, when you think of custom firmware, you may think of like PS3 custom firmware, like Rebug or like, um, you know, Xbox 360 custom firmware, like Freeboot or Atmosphere on the on the Switch. They can add extra things into the home screen, extra options and being able to, you know, run plugins that are persistent and stuff like, uh, you know, the exploit being persistent so that you don't have to reload the exploit every time you restart the console. So there's a lot of confusion about all of this stuff and the, how there was an older version of Mira. So the older version of Mira, that was just kind of like a, a kernel debugger. Um, plus it had a couple of extra options. I think it added some additional options in the debug settings for like deleting games and stuff, um, which isn't, I don't think is present in this version at, at this time. But yeah, the older version, don't really worry about the older version. Um, this is a full version release that's got a lot more features than the older version did. But it's not like custom firmware in that sense. It's still a payload that you have to load through the WebKit. It's not persistent. So when you restart the PS4, you'll have to load it again, just like every other payload. And the reason that it didn't launch with a compiled version for people to try is because this release is mainly for developers. The Mira project, it's basically like a framework. I mean, that's how they describe it. It's like a framework for developers to make stuff for the PS4. Um, and it's going to make things easier for people, for developers to make stuff for the PS4, to make plugins, to make um, their homebrew trainers and stuff like that. It's going to make it easier and it's going to give them more functionality so they can do more with the PS4 if they do it through Mira. It gives them access to more features. That is the general idea and that's why they released it without a compiled version because it's more not really done yet. It's not really ready for the end user to, to use at this point. So that's basically why Mira only released as the source code instead of a compiled version because it's mainly for developers just to kind of have a play around with right now because uh, they don't actually have it fully stable yet. They had a few issues like there was an issue with the RPC um, in Mira which stopped it from working like it failed randomly. So and you know they just don't have a stable version of it yet. There's still some bugs that have to be ironed out. I'm sure once they have all of that stuff sorted then they'll release an official compiled version for people to try. Um, I did compile a version myself and I will put a link in the description and show you guys how to run it if you want to just try it anyway. But bear in mind that the version that I compiled was from the source code um, today, which may still have some bugs. So, you know, it's not really advised to use it yet but you can if you want, so I'll link it in the description anyway. So what Mira will actually provide for, you know, us, the end users, not developers, is hopefully, you know, developers will be able to make better homebrew, better tools, better trainers, stuff like that for the PS4 through Mira. Also, Mira allows for plugins and for people to build stuff that will run through Mira. So instead of having to run multiple payloads, so for example, right now, if you want to run, you know, your homebrew, then you run the homebrew enabler payload. Then if you want to run FTP, you have to run an FTP payload. If you want to run um, like a connected RTE tool or something like the web trainer, then you need to run the web RTE payload. And the more payloads you run one after the other without restarting the console to reset them, the more likely you are to run into kernel panics and out of memory errors and having trouble loading more payloads at once. Whereas Mira can kind of integrate a lot of those payloads into one payload, into Mira. So you just run Mira on its own and then it gives you the functionality of about seven different payloads 
from just running one. So that's one advantage that Mira can hopefully give us. So for example, if a developer wants to add uh, FTP functionality, they can create a plugin for Mira instead of a separate payload that you have to run. They can create a plugin for Mira, an FTP plugin, build that version of Mira, release it. And then when you run that version of Mira, you get all of the normal base features that Mira has, plus also now an FTP server plugin so you can connect via FTP. And hopefully these plugins will be more stable than the payloads, because as you know with FTP, if you go into the settings, it disconnects. Um, if you go into a game or something like that, it disconnects. So maybe these uh, plugins can be more stable so it doesn't disconnect as often. Stuff like that. So it allows us to basically integrate a lot of payloads into one payload. Um, so you get multiple different features from just running one payload. So yeah, also another thing I didn't mention about Mira, one of the advantages is because everything is kind of uh, contained within Mira itself. So all, all these different developers, if they make different plugins and stuff for Mira, uh, when it comes to a new exploit ever releasing in future, let's say a 6.20 um, kernel exploit releases, then normally they would have to update every single payload individually. Um, you know, each developer who made some payload for 5.05 .05 would have to manually update it to work with 6.20. Whereas, you know, all the modules and stuff, they'd have to update it all. Whereas with Mira, if they made their software or their plugin, if they made it as a plugin in Mira instead of a payload, then you would just have to update Mira itself. Just, and that would update everything. So ev all the plugins would be updated at once. Um, I don't know, it depends though. If you hard code something that's specific to 5.05, .05, then surely it will it will not work if you just update Mira. So they may still have to update their individual plugins, but they won't have to update as many things as they would if they were updating, you know, a separate payload that they made. Um, so yeah, it also helps with that. It makes it easier for them to update their homebrew and their trainers and software and plugins. Uh, it makes it easier for them to update them to a new kernel exploit if one comes out, if they've built their stuff through Mira instead of separately outside of Mira. Even though they only released it yesterday, obviously there's not any developers who have come and made anything for Mira yet uh, and released it. But even the base features, there's quite a lot of stuff that's added in here. You can see the feature list right here. You know, the homebrew enablers built in. There's a kernel debugger, it can load SPRX modules, decrypt saves, uh, dump your HDD keys. It's got an RPC plugin as well in the background so you can connect via RPC. So it's got a lot of stuff that you can mess around with right now. I think it's also going to have overlay FS, which I don't think is working right now, but it's something that will also allow you to swap out game files like layered FS on the Switch, which is something I've been wanting for the PS4 for some time. It was, it, there was a payload called Orbis AFR, which did it, which was able to do it, but it was very, very buggy. So hopefully once uh, they get it overlay FS worked out and they get it working properly, then that'll be a huge thing because it makes it much easier to mod your package files. You don't have to mod the actual package file and rebuild it. You can just put a bunch of modified files somewhere on the hard drive or on a USB and it'll swap the it'll swap the modded files out for the original ones when you launch the game. That way you don't have to manually modify the original package file in the first place. Um, so it's got all that kind of cool stuff that's going to be built in. So if you do want to, to run it and try it out, then I'm going to show you right now how to install it. But please bear in mind that the developers have not released an official compiled version for a reason. And the reason is probably because it's currently unstable. There's still bugs in it right now. And, you know, so use at your own risk. I don't think there's any risk of you breaking your console. It's probably more of just a risk of, you know, it crashing more often when you run Mira and certain tools and plugins not working right now properly. But if you want to try it anyway, like I say, the link will be in the description to the version that I compiled from the source and uh, you can try it out. So here's how we install it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and load the internet browser and we're going to head to our exploit page right here, which is IP address 165.227.83.145. If you enter that IP address into the URL bar, it will take you to this uh, website. So this is Alizev's uh, website or WebKit host. 
So if we go into the PS4 section and then run the bin loader. Now there is, if you go into 5.05, uh, .05, you'll find Mira here, but this is the older version of Mira. Uh, so as you can see, it just says it's a remote kernel logger. So that is just the, the old kind of pre-alpha beta version of Mira that's been available for two years. So don't run that, that's an older version. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head into the PS4 section and we're gonna run the bin loader. Okay, so then it will say waiting awaiting payload. So at this point, so when you download Mira from the link I put in the description, it will be a zip file right here. What you're going to do is extract it to your desktop. And then once you have it on your desktop, if you open it up, so in here you'll have the platform.elf file, which is, actually, which is Mira itself, I believe. And then you have the loader, which is required to actually load the elf file. So you'll need to run the bin payload first. Uh, this other elf file in the loader, I think is for... Uh, dev kits or something so it's not required uh, for your, for most of you guys if you're on a regular ps4 then you just run the bin payload so what we're going to do is get a payload injector so i'm going to use netcat gui which again will be linked in the description so you run netcat gui right here so it opens up and then change the port number to 9020 enter the ip address of your ps4 which of course you can find by going into uh, settings, system settings, system information, you'll get your IP address. Just make sure you're connected to your network. So we're going to drag the bin file into the payload file path and then inject the payload. And then it'll come up saying waiting for clients right there on the PS4. At that point, you can then go back to the platform.elf file, load that into the payload file path. So you now have the platform.elf file in there change the port number to 9021 and then inject payload and then you'll get this elf message popping up here and then if we go back to the ps4 everything should now be running so for example i can run homebrew now homebrew is now running so that shows that mira is definitely working because mira contains a homebrew enabler so i can run homebrew right there so that's working we also have the debug settings enabled. If I go into the settings, scroll down to the bottom, debug settings are now enabled. So the kernel debugger and the RPC plugin should also be running. So to show that that's working, if I run uh, netcat and I enter the IP address of my PS4 and the port number is 9998 for the listener um, or for the kernel debugger. So I can run that and as you can see, as I'm scrolling along here, you can see it's printing out all of my CUSA numbers, just like if I had a UART cable connected. So you can see the debugger there is uh, is working and giving me all this debug printout out to the CMD window here. So that's working as well. And I believe the RPC uh, plugin runs on port 9999. So I think 9998 is the port number f well yeah 9998 is the port number for the the listener for the for the debugger but for the rpc plugin it's 9999 at least that's what it was for the old um mira version so i assume they just kept it the same maybe they have changed the rpc one but this one's it, se it seems like it's the same as as before so yeah that's basically it that's how you run mira and that is kind of Mira explained as far as I could explain it. It's more of a framework so that developers can do more on the PS4. that can do stuff from just one payload. And, you know, that just makes it generally easier for developers. It gives them more functionality. And also it's kind of meant to work with the new open source SDK that's been released, which will allow developers to make homebrew without any copyrighted code, which should hopefully bring more developers into the PS4 scene and they'll be able to use you know the open source SDK plus Mira to hopefully build some really cool stuff for the PS4 in the near future so yeah there's a lot of good advantages there so anyway hopefully you can have a better understanding now of Mira and what it can hopefully do for the scene so anyway hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful if you did please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one